Hi, I'm Leslie. And I'm Mishana. And this is the Leslie and Mishana Show on whatsupnw.com. Today we're in Oregon, just outside the Columbia River Gorge. Yes, and we are about to go explore the towns that are surrounding the area, so join us. Yay! Let's, Let's go! go. outside the Vault Hotel here in Dufour, Oregon. The hotel was built in 1907 and has been a charming stop for weary travelers over the decades. Located in the rolling hills of Dufour Valley, Oregon, it's just under two hours east of Portland. This three-story brick hotel has 20 bedrooms and a suite on the third floor boasting a magnificent view of Mount Hood right behind you and a private bath with a rolling tub. All of the rooms are furnished with period antiques and there are no televisions or phones in the room so guests can unplug and visit a simpler time. Also, original keys to open the door. So my name is Vicki Bird, um, I'm the manager here at the Sunshine Mill for the tasting room, um, sales and hospitality manager. Uh, if you haven't been here, it's a really special place. Um, I love working here because this building has a very rich history, history as does the whole entire town. Um, lots of things to do here outside and now that we have the wine industry, lots of things to do inside as well as a lot of new restaurants. and. Um, other outdoor things to do. Um, I love working at the Sunshine Mill partially because one of my best friends from childhood is the owner and it's being part of a dream that they started um, a little over 12 years ago um, and that would be Molly and James Martin. Molly and I have known each other since we were 12 so when I moved back to town after living at the beach for a while it was perfect timing. Um, I came in and just fell in love with the place and so their story has become my story. So. Um, being back in the Dallas was a choice for me. I didn't just end up here. Um, I chose to be here for sure. And eventually my kids came back. Uh, my daughter also works here. My son has worked for the Martins um, on sabbatical when he was home from college. Um, and now we joke that we can't afford him, but he did some of our lovely labels on our wine bottles. So um, everyone's kind of contributed in some way to, to making this a personal um, part of their life. And so um, it's fun to be a part of something that gives back to the community and really enriches the lives here. Hi, my name is Bella Bird. Um, I'm the daughter of Vicki Bird, who's the manager here. Um, and I've been working here for four years. Um, so basically just family brought me here and also a love of wine and yeah, love this place, love the atmosphere, love the history, love the people that come here. It's always a great time. My name is Spencer and I'm a sixth generation of the Dalles. Um, I've lived here most of my life. I've been a couple other places, but something kind of drew me to the Sunshine Mill. I think it is just uh, being a part of the history that's been around here since the 1800s. So here in the tasting room, being a sixth generation of the Dallas, I've seen uh, the Dallas has been changing a lot into more of a tourist area. So there's actually a lot of really cool buildings in the Dallas. This was the first electric power building in the Dallas. So um, that's what's cool about this building. But there's also like some really old bookstores like Clint's, um, Clock Tower, the Mint building. There's a lot of really cool historical buildings that if you're headed out in the direction of the Dallas, you should definitely visit. There's always something new happening here and new wines to try, drive-in movies to see, um, fun things going on all the time. So it's a fun place to be. I mean, we don't want to just be to the people, the snobby people who come in and say, oh, I want that $100 bottle of wine. We have it. But we also want to be to the person who just is figuring out wine. You know, two, three years ago, he didn't know anything about wine. And now he knows more than I probably do and can tell you how it was made, like the champagne that we showed you, how it's really cool that she's touched every bottle. You know, like some of these winemakers have just put their heart and soul into it in the gorge. And it's it's been tough with the pandemic and, um, you know, say 
I had somebody say, oh, you must have really great sales because people are drinking. Day drinkers don't want a $30 bottle of wine. You know, they want to have something else. So we pride ourselves to keep the prices at a, at a reasonable. Like I said earlier, we do not overprice or underprice anyone. Um, we sit down and we taught, we do this kind of thing with everybody who's on our shelf so that they can send somebody there send somebody here and say, you know what, our wine's on that shelf, go over there and try it. Um, so and we don't want to ever get too big that we can't have that one-on-one -on -one or that personal or, hey, I had this with salmon the other day. I didn't like the salmon, but I like the wine kind of thing, so. I think my favorite part about working in an environment like this is being able to hear those stories and share those stories with people that come in and talk about the process of making wine, what made them get into wine, why they're, why they're still in wine, what they enjoy about it, and kind of the ups and downs. and especially in the area here specifically uh, with the fires and just the different climate and di different uh, geography and everything like that. How much really goes into making one bottle of wine compared to dozens, hundreds of wines and everything like that. And being able to share that story and kind of see that connect with other people that come in here is really cool. Yeah. It's going to be a venue for uh, like exclusive carriers of uh, some wines and it's like the Almaterra, yep. like Ben was saying, you have north-facing slopes, the uh, south-facing slopes. You have hot, dry climate. You have rainforest and everything in between. So all it produces a different grape, and people do good stuff with it. Um, even smoke. Sometimes it trashes a, a wine. Sometimes it makes people go crazy for that that flavor, or if depending on what the winemaker does with it. So it's really important to represent that and be available for folks to come to. In the organic side, some of the wines we carry are, um, mm -hmm. are certified salmon safe, um, which is kind of unique, you know, for wines and things like that. Um, the stories that they've gone through with the fires, helping each other out, and it's a small community. Um, there's an association called Columbia Gorge Wine Growers Association, yeah. and we're a part of that. And so it's a really neat time to be able to see what all of the, every, how everybody's getting through the pandemic, how everybody's working through the fires, and they. It's just a, a small knit community that if somebody's winery had a problem, somebody from somewhere else is going to come over and say not to tell them what to do, but to give advice. And that's an, a very unique thing about the gorge and how you know the, I call it the good old boys, but how they take care of each other. And I think it's awesome having people come in and know that can, or people will come in and they know more about wine than I do and they can kind of teach me something mm -hmm. about that. But then we also have people that come in and don't know or just scratching the surface of wine and what goes into it and then I can not only educate them but also kind of light a spark in someone and be like, oh, now I'm into wine or oh, I typically don't like reds. Well, I tried this red here and now I'm my palate to kind of expand it or vice versa with like whites and everything like that and just kind of take people out of those comfort zones and like because a lot of people will come in and be shut off to having white wines and then you give them something and they're like oh okay maybe not uh, my whole perception on white wine has been changed and stuff like that so yeah we want to sometimes uh geek out and have the same block or the same varietal and have it tasting you know from different winemakers or the same varietal from different parts of the gorge and even though it's close by it could be really different and, and just to do that kind of tasting so that's another thing to offer for people who want to geek out on wine yeah, I think our shop is very reflective of the area we live in too with just the different kind of wines that we carry with how you can drive 20 minutes north or excuse me, you can drive 20 minutes west and go, be in a completely different climate and that climate has a huge effect on the different grapes that are grown and everything like that. And not just in the Hood River Dallas area but also in the entire gorge too. You go closer towards Portland, you're gonna have a lot wetter, different style of grapes. You go farther out, it's gonna be a lot more drier, again, different style. And some of the wines that we carry, like we have grapes that have been, that are specific to areas such as like Chile and stuff like that. And we're able to grow those here because of how dry and how warm it is. But then if we grew that 30 miles that way, it wouldn't survive at all kind of thing. And we're very blessed with like, just the different elevations and the different rocks and the environment that we live in good point going back to like how everyone is welcome in here we we know some people may like wine some people may not like wine so we started carrying beer cider and then we have root beer floats to go and we kind of moved into um, non-alcoholic as well because some people may not want to come in here and have a glass of wine but they like the social environment so they can come in here and still 
decompress, talk to people, and meet people, but not having to have that pressure of like, mm -hmm. well, I'm going to be surrounded by alcohol. You don't have to drink it by any means. So. Yes, and the big thing was we just wanted everybody to be able to experience the gorge for what it has, you know, and and the unique shops that are around here and things like that, down from the beers to the, you know, the unique woodworking um, shops and things like that that they don't have other places. There's been times somebody like, oh, I love your cheese board. Well, go across the street and see what else she has, you know, what she can create for you. And so it's a nice community base that people are trying to help each other, and it's it's nice. So I'm glad to be a part of it. I love that. Uh, hi, I'm Joe Kasarek. I'm the chef at uh, Baldwin Saloon in the Dallas, Oregon. Uh, we, uh, together with the Martin family, James and Molly, are uh, relaunching uh, the Baldwin Saloon. It's a, it's a very old, very established um, hub of the community here in the Dallas. Uh, we are um, uh, revitalizing the menu and, and, and bringing uh, the menu up to a fine dining standard. Uh, we look forward to being uh, the uh, premier fine dining restaurant both here in the Dalles and in the Gorge. I've been in the kitchen for over 15 years. I've been a chef for uh, that long um, and I just know that this is all I want to do. Uh, my first job was for a member of the Brennan family in New Orleans. Uh, the Brennan family is uh, one of the most uh, famous restaurateur families in the United States uh, and I worked at one of their restaurants that was my first job uh, and uh, after after being there for a few months uh, I also got a job working for Emeril Lagasse at his original restaurant in New Orleans uh, and, we, and so that's something that's very common in the restaurant world uh, especially when you're just starting out is sometimes you have to have two jobs I mean you know I went from being an attorney to making seven fifty an hour as a as a prep cook for the Brennans, and so you know just kind of kind of look for a little more money than that. Plus plus experience. I wanted to get as much experience as I could uh, at the Brennan restaurant. I was uh, I was doing prep work and I was working at the, on the savory side. At Emeralds, I worked in their pastry department, so I was exposed to uh, the making of breads and desserts uh, and all manner of sweet things. Uh, so I, I I felt I got a really well rounded education uh, like on the job all on the job training uh, COVID-19 um, really struck a hard blow uh, in the restaurant community not just in New Orleans but nationwide and uh, so while I was there in New Orleans uh, contemplating what my next step would be contemplating retirement I got a phone call from James Martin uh, because I not because I knew them but I didn't know James and Molly Martin from our previous time here in the Dallas and they presented me with this opportunity to come back to the Dallas to um, reopen and rejuvenate uh, the Baldwin Saloon and it was an offer I couldn't refuse. Uh, but we do, uh, we do everything from scratch here. We make our own breads, we make pasta, we make our own desserts, uh, we make our own sauces. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a very labor-intensive um, system we have in the kitchen, but everybody has um, jumped right in with really good attitudes. Uh, so it's just been a great, great experience uh, being here and uh, reopening the Baldwin Saloon.
All right, we hope you enjoyed our weekend at the Dalles and in Dufour, Oregon. If you're ever in town, stop by, check out some of the places, or come visit here. It's perfect. Yes, and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more adventures. And don't forget to comment, too, below. Let us know if there's anywhere else you'd like us to go next. Have a great day. Bye. Should I take these sunglasses off? Yes, please. Ow! <laughs> it's so funny. Don't worry, don't mind me. Definitely not recording this. <laughs> oh, you letting your show? I don't know. I was hiding it. it. Oh. I don't Ow, that really hurt cool. my finger. <laughs> Charlie! Charlie! I don't have a, oh, that's it. Song. I'm naming my microphone Charlie because it bit my finger. Definitely not recording well, this. If I, cover <laughs> I totally it with am. My hair, maybe that will help. That's fine. Okay. Cool. Okay. So he looks significantly taller. Should we switch sides? Maybe, or we won't have your shoes in the in the picture. How about a? Uh, nice. Do you want to take your shoes off for now? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Wait. We're gooder. And you're blocking the mountains. Damn well, it. We don't want that ugly Not thing in the background. Bit. Yes. You want it on the one X, though, right? Oh, I'm still recording. <laughs> oh, wait. The hand's behind us, right? What, Riley's hand? Or front? I don't like that blue back there. She said do something with your hands. Okay, we're rolling. Oh, sorry. Oh. We're live. <clears throat> oh, you just have that, right? I mean, okay. Uh -huh. All right. She's got a cord off? hanging. Oh, oh. Right. ready. Yeah. Good. All right. Hi, I'm Leslie. And I'm Mishana. And this is the Leslie and Mishana Show on whatsupnw.com. Today we're in Oregon, just outside of the Columbia River Gorge area. <laughs> we'll have to do that again. <laughs> Hi, I'm Leslie. And I'm Mishana. And this is the Leslie and Mishana Show on whatsupnw.com. Today we're just outside. We're just outside. We're outside. We're outside. We're outside. That's hard. She, clearly. <laughs> Good outside. job. Sorry, bug just flew in my mouth. <laughs> Sorry. Uh. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Located in. Dude, I already forgot. Yeah, stop. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're having such a fun time. Go get the other door. Mm -hmm. The other door. Yeah, I got it. Let you in first. <laughs> All of the rooms are furnished, yet there are no bat um shit. <laughs> it's a But they never did. So, yeah. so the milling is only on this side. Don't look. Hold it. Oh. Hold it open. Perfect, dude. Dude, you're a fucking angel. Name the chef that put the restaurant you're at. Bless you. Thank you. Do you know all the fun <laughs> stuff? Oh, all like all the fun stuff? All the fun stuff. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.